This movie is an excerpt from a longer lesson and you can find out more evidence-based information about childbirth physiology and practice in my blog, podcast, books, courses, mailing list and membership. Please see the links in the description and subscribe to this channel to be notified of new content. By the end of pregnancy, the mother and baby have made lots of physiological changes to set the scene for the symphony of labour. And at the onset of labour, the body is ready to respond to the hormones that drive labour. The instruments are ready and the music begins. The sensitivity of the uterus to oxytocin and prostaglandins has peaked. There is a shift from the irregular low frequency contractions of pregnancy to high frequency high intensity contractions of labour. Processes within the baby and placenta are thought to initiate this change. And we're still learning about this signal and process, but it is thought that it may involve surfactant-related protein made in the baby's lungs and increased levels of baby's DNA in the mother's circulation. Essentially, the baby sent a signal in pregnancy for the mother's body to begin preparing for labour, and now the baby sends a signal again to initiate labour. But for most women, this shift into labouring is not quick. Instead, there is a phase of early labour before the labour pattern becomes strong and more established. And to understand the pattern of early labour, we need to understand the purpose of this phase, which is common across all mammals, including humans. The purpose of early labour for mammals is to find somewhere safe before moving into the more vulnerable phases of labour. So herd animals take themselves away from the herd to birth and domesticated cats and dogs will find themselves a secluded space in their homes to give birth. For humans, feeling safe is not just about the place of birth, it is also about the people that are around the woman. And for labour to establish, the parasympathetic nervous system needs to dominate, meaning that the woman needs to feel safe and relaxed. So early labour is all about finding somewhere that allows the parasympathetic system to dominate. And we need the sympathetic nervous system to assist with this activity. So let's take a look at what is happening physiologically in early labour and how the balancing act between the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system works. Contractions are created by oxytocin acting on the oxytocin receptors in the uterus. Prostaglandin assists oxytocin to function and it also stimulates contractions. For mammals who are awake during the day, including women, labour usually starts at night because there are nocturnal surges of oxytocin and the sleep hormone, melatonin, increases the uterus's sensitivity to oxytocin. Oxytocin is released from the mother's brain from her pituitary and limbic system. However, it is also made by the placenta and the baby. And oxytocin attaches to the oxytocin receptors in the uterus and the uterus responds by contracting. But oxytocin also initiates nest building behaviours and facilitates feelings of connectedness and sharing with others. This sets the scene for that post-birth bonding between mother and baby. And oxytocin release happens best when the parasympathetic nervous system is dominating. So environments that are private, safe and warm promote the release of oxytocin. Darkness and low lighting stimulate the pineal gland to secrete melatonin and melatonin works synergistically with oxytocin to increase uterine contractions. The excitement and stress of labour beginning causes an increase in adrenaline and cortisol that's released by the mother's adrenal glands and these hormones activate the neocortex or the thinking part of the brain to facilitate the thinking and activities needed to find a safe place to birth. Women are able to organise childcare, travel, call their midwife to attend etc because they are able to think. The early labour phase requires a woman to remain connected to the external world so that she can do what is necessary to settle into her birth space and adrenaline helps with this. If adrenaline dominates during this time, contractions may stop altogether until the oxytocin adrenaline balance is restored. This very clever mechanism enables women in early labour to stop contracting in response to danger in the same way as other mammals do. In response to the pain caused by labour contractions, the body begins to release beta endorphins. And beta endorphins combined with oxytocin create an urge to nest and an urge to find somewhere safe and secluded. And they assist in feeling relaxed and helping to get into that parasympathetic nervous system. Prolactin is another important hormone 
And during the early labor phase, there is a massive surge in prolactin. And prolactin prepares the receptors in the mother's brain and breasts for breastfeeding. Prolactin is the hormone of mothering, and it is the hormone that maintains breast milk supply. And in early labor, the baby and placenta are squeezed with each contraction. This squeezing encourages the baby to flex and curl and move downwards further into the pelvis, getting ready for the journey through the pelvis. The baby also releases cortisol in response to the eustress, which is a healthy stress of labor, and this assists further with preparing the lungs to breathe. As labor progresses, the regular squeezing and massaging of the baby with contractions stimulates huge amounts of oxytocin in the baby's brain, preparing them for bonding behaviors. Early labor will move into established labor once the woman's parasympathetic nervous system dominates and the conductor is able to conduct the symphony of hormones without distraction. Contractions will become stronger, usually more regular, but not always because labor patterns are individual. The cervix will soften even further and may begin to be pulled open. However, the opening of the cervix is not a good indicator of what is happening in the labor process. See my previous lesson on the transformation of the uterus in labor. Oxytocin will increase alongside beta endorphins, which create the altered state of consciousness associated with established labor. The woman feels safe enough to let go of the external world and follow the music and her instincts. The early labor phase can take many hours and in some cases days before it moves into established labor. And this is very normal. This phase of labor serves an important purpose.